Good morning. My name is Sergeant Jeremy Pierce, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police Lafayette Post. I'd like to thank you all for being here and thank the Delphi United Methodist Church for allowing us to use their facility. This morning, we're going to provide an update on the investigation into the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Before we get started, I'm going to introduce to you our speakers, Superintendent of the Indiana State Police, Doug Carter, the Carroll County Sheriff, Tobe Lesenby, and the Carroll County Prosecutor, Nick McClelland. I'd like to remind everyone that this continues to be an active and ongoing investigation. At the conclusion of this press conference, we are going to answer a limited amount of questions out of respect to the investigation and the process that will follow today. We will not discuss evidence that is related to this investigation. On behalf of the Delphi Double Homicide Task Force, thank you all for your continued support. I would now like to introduce to you our first speaker, Superintendent of the Indiana State Police, Doug Carter. Give me just a second here. Seldom do I have prepared remarks, but today is different because I do not want there, be, there to be any confusion or ambiguity with what I will say. Today is not a day to celebrate, but the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi on two counts of murder is sure a major step in leading to the conclusion of this long-term and complex investigation. First, I'd like to speak directly to Anna, Mike, Becky, Kelsey, your extended families, along with the entire Delphi community that certainly has grown and now includes our nation and even many countries around the world. I am proud to report to you that today, actually last Friday, was the day. And an arrest has been made. Thanks to literally hundreds of media outlets that have been steadfast in reporting and keeping the memories of Abby and Libby front and center. Many of you in the room have developed relationships with me personally, and you know I always have a personal perspective, and today's no different. But from a very personal perspective, you have provided, you all have provided inspiration and support, even while oftentimes frustrated with us and me. You continue, but you continue to encourage the efforts, and you too believe that one day we would all be here participating and sharing this news. To the entire law enforcement community, which includes all local, state, and federal agencies, which are far too many to specifically mention today, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are going to continue a very methodical and committed approach to ensure that if any other person had any involvement in these murders in any way, that person or persons will be held accountable. Since the murders of Abby and Libby 2,086 days ago, the daily investigative team has worked tirelessly and is certainly worthy of mention today. Specifically, Sheriff Lindsenby, the Sheriff of Carroll County, Detectives Tony Liggett, Detective retired Kevin Hammond, former Delphi Chief and now the Prosecutor's Investigator Steve Mullins, State Police First Sergeant Jerry Holman, Detectives Jay Harper, Dave Vito, and Brian Harshman, along with members of the United States Marshal Service, specifically Agent Jeremy Clinton and Agent Bill Colfers. With them today is Dan McLean, the U.S. Marshal, appointed U.S. Marshal. Our State Police Analyst, 
our scientists from many different disciplines within our laboratory division, Mrs. Kathy Shank, for your incredible dedication to detail and to so many others that I know I've missed. I really believe that Abby and Libby would be proud of you for standing strong, even in the face of immense pressure and perpetual criticism. Some of these individuals have postponed retirement, passed on promotional opportunity, have dedicated personal time away from their families, given up nights, weekends, and holidays, all while in the pursuit of accountability for Abby and Libby. I know that today's announcement will not diminish your resolve, and I hope you have found just a bit of peace in this most complicated world. This is really important. While I know you are all expecting final details today concerning this arrest, today is not that day. Today is not that day. This investigation is far from complete, and we will not jeopardize its integrity by releasing or discussing documents or information before the appropriate time. Prosecutor Nick McClellan, of course, will share additional information about what we can and cannot say, and also explain to you why the probable cause affidavit is temporarily sealed by the court and not available. And by the way, he has been a tremendous, tremendous asset to this team. I'm yet again asking you for your patience and please your understanding while our system of due process works. Also remember that all persons arrested are presumed innocent. All persons arrested are presumed innocent. You all will have an innate desire to subjectively interpret and then report what you think. We in the law enforcement realm cannot and you should never allow us to talk about what we think concerning facts, but rather discuss and share at the right time what it is we know. The time will come when additional details can be released. But again, today is not that day. It's about Abby and Libby, their families in this community, this nation, and even our planet. The prosecutor has been very clear with law enforcement about what his expectations are, about what can and cannot be released, shared, or discussed. So we will, of course, comply. If you choose to be critical of our silence, be critical of me. not the front line. These are the folks that have committed their entire lives to a successful conclusion. In other words, a guilty verdict. As we move to the next phase of this investigation, I will continue to offer all resources that the ISP has to not only the investigative team that I anticipate growing, but also to Prosecutor McClellan as we prepare for the coming months. Again, Nick has been very resolute and very clear, and I'm most grateful uh, for, for, his, for his leadership, and I, I, it's going to be really important as we move forward. Please continue offering tips that you would like to share. The many avenues to report will remain open and will be available to all. Please continue doing that. In closing, I stand before you in this church and very place where we held our first briefing nearly six years ago and just hours after the murders of Abby and Libby. Right here. Pulling in today, I wasn't really sure what emotion I would, I would experience 
But peace came over me. And I didn't expect that to happen. And I hope all of you, with all the different responsibilities you have from around the planet today, have felt some of that as well. But remember, we're not done. I think what we all have experienced proves that together there is nothing we cannot do. But more importantly, giving of ourselves, all of us, all of us, giving of ourselves matters more than what we could ever receive. Abby and Libby, though in death, have had a profound effect on so many of us, on how we live, and as importantly, who we all should be. I would now like to introduce to you my friend and the Carroll County Sheriff, Tom Ledsby, for his remarks. Sure. I believe in a God of justice and righteousness. Today, I believe that same God has provided us with justice for Abby and Libby. As Sheriff of Carroll County, Indiana, I want to publicly and sincerely thank each individual who played a role in helping us during this five and a half year investigation. Whether it was in an investigative capacity, providing tips, cards or letters of suggestions or encouragement, phone calls, and thousands of other countless ways of communicating. I earnestly thank those who prayed for this moment in time. We now move forward through the Indiana criminal justice system, allowing the system to provide its due diligence and process in providing that justice which is owed Abby and Libby, their families, and this community. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. My name is Nicholas McClellan. I'm the Carroll County Prosecutor. And before we get started, I want to reiterate some of the things that Sheriff Lesenby and Superintendent Carter stated. I first want to thank both of them. They've been a great support to my office throughout this investigation. They've always been there for a phone call and always been willing to help a hand or a line of assistance to me and my office uh, during this investigation. I want to thank the team behind me. This is the Homicide Task Force team that we've put together. Uh, thank them and thank their families for being so understanding for the many nights they've worked away from their families, away from their children. There are many dates in a lifetime that you're going to remember. The date your children are born, the date you're married, the date you buy a first house, the date Abby and Libby went missing. One of those dates was last Friday, October 28, 2022. At that time, we had gathered evidence to formulate a PC that we submitted to the court, and the judge did find probable cause for an arrest of Richard Allen. He's been charged with two counts of murder for the murder of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. This investigation is still very ongoing. We're keeping the tip line open, the tip email open. We encourage everybody to continue to call in tips, not only about Richard Allen, but about any other person that you may have. For that reason and for the nature of this case, the probable cause and the charging information has been sealed by the court. I've been very clear to everybody that per the court order, we cannot talk about the evidence that's in the probable cause or the evidence that's in the charging information. That will become evident to you at some point and it will be released, but right now is not that day. Today's about Abby and Libby, focusing on them. 
Mr. Allen has had his initial hearing. He's in a preliminary plea of not guilty. The matter has been set for a pretrial on January 13th at 9 a.m. 2023 and a trial date of March 20th, 2023 at 9 a.m. He is presumed innocent. We will have an opportunity and day in court when we can present the evidence that we have against him. But until that day, he is presumed innocent. I want to open up to a few limited questions from the audience. But again, keep in mind, we are not going to talk about the evidence that we have in this case or about the charging information. We cannot. Those things have been sealed by the court. And so I want to open up a few questions. Prosecutor, when did Richard Allen become a suspect? And do you think he acted alone? Again, that's part of the investigation, so I'm not going to talk about those things. What I can say is that we have probable cause established by the court for his arrest, and he is in custody. He's being held currently without bond. How long is he been a suspect? I'm sorry? Again, that gets into the evidence we have of the investigation. And, and I know, I know from everybody, it's frustrating. I know everybody, not only reporters, but the family, everybody wants to know more information. I understand it's frustrating, but my goal is to maintain the integrity of this case. Is there a the Carter, you had said that you believe that you had spoken to the suspect or the suspect's family two years ago. Is this man... Again, we're, we're going to, that's, that's, that's a, I appreciate the question, but we're getting into the timeline of events, and today's not the time to do that. Can you talk about how rare it is? It was a very personal moment for me, and I think it was a very personal moment for them, for all of us that have had interaction with, with, with the family. Um, we developed a relationship that I think is going to last at least a one lifetime and, and maybe, maybe a second. So it was, it was a very, very, very sad yet a very humbling experience. Superintendent, you asked for tips, you um, protected work, it was a reward for $325,000. Did this all come together to make this nexus? Is that the combination of all three things? That led us to this day, uh, or is it one or the other? Well, eventually you'll be able to see what led us to this day, but again, today's not that day. To include the, the reward, you, you, you mentioned that, Raphael, about the, about the reward itself. And again, very premature for us to talk about that. There's still um, a tremendous amount of work to do. I think probably resilience and understanding the value of each and every day. That t today was the day, but I didn't anticipate they ever thought today would be their day. And um, I feel like I've known for a long time. Excuse me? Did you assume there's any other individuals involved in this case? We haven't closed the door on the investigation. And so that's why we keep the tip line and the tip email open. And so we're not presuming anything at this point, but we're going to continue to take tips, continue to take any information anybody has. And as we've done with all the information we've gathered, we're going to look at that and examine that and see where it leads us. Sure. 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 It, it is unusual. We don't do it very often um, in all the cases that we handle here in Carroll County. We did it in this case because the investigation is still an o still open. And while all cases are important, this the nature of this case uh, has some extra scrutiny with it. And so we, my office, me felt it was important to seal those records. There will be a public hearing on whether or not those records are going to remain sealed or not. Um, there'll be public notice for that hearing so that everyone can attend, but there will be a hearing to determine whether or not they're going to stay sealed. But for now, to me, it, it's about protecting the integrity of this case. I want to have an opportunity at some point uh, to have an opportunity in court to explain the evidence and for that not to be tarnished or tainted or anything like that. Again, he's presumed innocent. 
And so it was important for me in this case to do that. Hold on just a minute. We're not going to comment on that right now uh, as part of the investigation. Um, again, we just encourage everybody to continue to call in tips if they have them about anybody, uh, and we'll examine those tips. That's a hard question to answer. It's, it's a mixed emotions. Um, I've been watching the news all weekend like everybody else has, and, and I think a lot of the members of the public said it right. It's, it's bittersweet. It's a step in the right direction. It's, it's concerning that it, he's a local guy. Um, so I think just a, a different emotions. Um, again, this is a step in the right direction. This is the first step into getting into court and, and having a trial. And so... All right. That concludes our press conference today. Shortly, I will be releasing a press release that will have this photo and uh, a couple more details that will also be here for handout. Um, that will also be on the Indiana State Police Lafayette Post Facebook page. Right after this press conference, I'm going to send it out. There's also hard documents in the back. Thank you all for taking the time to be here today and be safe as you travel home. Because we didn't know where he was. And like I said, Doug Carter had made mention of that is he could be living right amongst us, hiding in plain sight. And that's that's what came. Tell me just Mike, how you're feeling. You have anything to say to Richard Allen? No, I'll save that for when I see him face to face. So what went through your heart and your mind when those charges were read? Um, it was a uh, kind of bittersweet, you know, it's uh I just know that there's another job, another hill for us to climb ahead of us. But we're up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep after it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to stop. Why is it important to keep the tip line alive at this point? Because I want every stone unturned, every bit of information that's out there pertaining to this case. I want the investigative mm -hmm. team to have that information. Mm -hmm. How confident think the are you the police have their man? Uh, that's, that's what the courts will decide, mm -hmm. right? But I'm, I'm confident. I've I mean, always had confidence in the, in the investigative team. What do you see hopeful? Yes, I'm hopeful. What, what keeps you hopeful? <laughs> uh, the faith and, and the strength of our family and uh, the fact of the, I know how hard the investigative teams work and, and they're nonstop. Who asked that? Uh, yeah. Who asked that? Oh, I, just, I, I wanted to speak about your faith because I know it was important to you. If it were your child, would you have an option not to be hopeful? No, absolutely not. That's why we're hopeful. You all, there is okay, a, there, well, 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 can I just ask you one question? Maybe you can put a rumor yeah. to rest or something. There's a there's a report going around right now that this Mr. Allen actually processed some photos for the family at the CBS. Do you know if that's accurate? That is accurate. Okay, and that he didn't charge the family when they came in to claim the photos? That is correct. Okay, and you you know that firsthand. We, we are always yeah. careful to be accurate. All right, one more question. Do you think the media coverage of this has been fair? Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Are you, you guys yes. in the in the media have been certainly more than fair. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. We've had our share of shots taken at us, and that's fine. And hopefully, those people will now be able to reflect in the mirror and say, oh, you know, maybe that wasn't the case. So, you know, reservations and, and things like this is always the better case, right? It's it's the better judgment. We all know that, and that's just how we that's how we are, right? I don't I don't cast judgment on something until I know for sure. And uh, okay, thank you, folks. That's what we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.